All BladeBridge configurations are funded by partners on behalf of end user projects and are not an endorsement by BladeBridge or its team members. Hello and welcome to the presentation of BladeBridge Converter. In this session, I'll demonstrate how to convert Hive scripts to Snowflake. I will be using a converter called SQLConf, and this converter, just as all of our utilities, is command line based. We produce executables for Linux and Windows. The converter expects several command line switches, such as a license key file, a single input file, or a folder provided with a minus D option, the output folder name, and the configuration file. Configuration file is particularly important because all of our converters, including this one, bases its operations on externalized configurations. Uh, the configuration file will contain instructions that tell the converter how to handle source code and what patterns to use on the output. My full converter command is right here. The executable name, the license key file, an input file, the output folder, and the configuration file name. The input file I'll be converting is this. It has several Hive commands, such as setting variables, a few DML statements that use Hive-specific functions. I will go ahead and run this converter command, Hive to SF. And before I do that, I'm going to navigate to my output folder just to ensure it's empty. I'm going to go ahead the converter. Converter takes just a few seconds to run, and the converter produces the output script. The output script that the converter produced in this case is Snowflake compatible, so it can be executed against Snowflake. I will go ahead and show what the differences are. On the left-hand side, we have the original script, and on the right side, we have the converted script. So first of all, the converter got rid of Hive-specific variable referencing convention in the first two statements, in, in the delete statement and the insert statement. Going forward, in the select clause of this statement, the converter changed the function calls from months between to date diff and from trunk to date trunk. But the converter didn't only change the function names, it also changed the signature of the functions. It actually swapped around the order of the arguments and plugged in a couple of default arguments. For example, the original month between function took two arguments, but the converter plugged in this argument in the first position, and then it took the last argument and plugged it into the second position. And the first argument, which is a nested function call, got moved to the last position in the month between call, which got converted to date diff. The converter also changed the trunk function call to date trunk and plugged in an argument in the first position. Going down, looking at this DDL, converter changed the data type so it, it, it saw a string and it changed it to text. It also removed the unneeded clauses in the DDL, such as the partitioning and clustering clauses. Going further down, the converter saw the locate function and changed that to regex insert function. And lastly, and lastly, the converter saw the group by clause with the positional parameters, and it changed that to the actual names of the columns that are used in the select clause. Now, how does the converter know what to convert and how? Part of that is embedded into the configuration file. So one of the configuration files that we used on the command line is called Hive to Snowflake. This configuration file deals specifically with transformations and substitutions that are pertinent to Hive to Snowflake conversions. Each configuration file typically has several sections, and the facilities that the converter utilizes can range from very simple regex substitutions at the line level to block substitutions to function replacements. So for example, we can tell the converter that whenever it finds the locate function to change that to this output pattern, regexp inst, but to plug in the second argument first and then the first argument in the second position. Similarly, the function call months between gets converted to date diff 
and the output template is such that the first argument to the new function call will be the literal month. And then the original second argument, whether it's a single token or nested function call or an expression. And then in the last position, there'll be the first argument to the original function call. So this is how the converter knows how to convert source code patterns to the target patterns. Other facilities that the converter can use are external hooks. So you as the operator of the converter can write your own code snippets and have the converter invoke them whenever it sees certain source code patterns. So just to recap, we took a Hive script that contained several DDL and DML statements, ran it through the converter, provided the configuration file as one of the arguments, and get the Snowflake script produced, which can be executed with the SnowSQL command. And this concludes our presentation. Thank you for listening in.